So let's look at how neutrinos interact with matter. Let's start off in our neutron star. The neutron star in the middle has put out an absolutely staggering number of neutrinos. About 10 to the 57 neutrinos. Can they get out? Well, you've still got about 10 solar masses worth of material in some sort of shell still falling in at the time that the neutrino uh, burst comes out. So the question is, can the neutrinos make it through this thick shell? This is a contest between two things. One is the stupendously high number of neutrinos. The other thing is the stupendously low cross-section. So let's imagine we have a neutrino and it's trying to get through some matter. Now the matter is made of atoms and if the neutrino comes within the cross-sectional area, which if you remember is 10 to the minus 47 square meters, that's for each atom or molecule, if it goes within that area then it will interact with it. If it misses that area it will get through. So let's ask what is the total cross-sectional area of all the infalling gas? So each atom has 10 to the minus 47 square meters, but there's a lot of atoms. How many atoms? Well, it's got a mass of around 10 solar masses. So that's 10 times the mass of the sun, 2 by 10 to the 30 kilograms. And it's mostly hydrogen. Mass of one hydrogen atom is about 1.6 by 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So number of atoms is going to be about the total mass. So that's 2 by 10 to the 31 from here, all over 1.6 by 10 to the minus 27, which comes out as roughly 10 to the 58 atoms. So if each atom has a cross-sectional area of 10 to the minus 47, the total cross-sectional area is just 10 to the 58 times 10 to the minus 47, which is about 10 to the 11 square meters. So that's a pretty big cross-sectional area. What fraction of the neutrinos are thus going to be intercepted? Well, that's going to depend a bit on how far out our shell of gas is. Of course, it's not really a shell. There'll be some gas very close in and some gas further out. But let's guesstimate that at the moment when the neutrinos rip loose, the bulk of the gas is, I don't know, something like uh, a thousand kilometers out. So if it's about a thousand kilometers out, so let's approximate as being a shell that distance out, made of all these 10 to the 58 atoms. And each atom has its little cross-section, so there's a total cross-sectional area of 10 to the 11 square meters. But what's the total area of the shell? Area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, so in this case it's 4 pi times 1,000 kilometers. So that's 10 to the 6 meters, 1,000 kilometers times 1,000 to, to, to meters, 10 to the 6 squared which is roughly 10 to the 13 square meters, which is about 100 times bigger than that. So what this is telling us is that if you could approximate all the infalling gas as a shell about 1,000 kilometers out, about 1% of the neutrinos will be intercepted, which means that 1% you know, of the energy will be dumped in the gas, which is not too far off the energy of the blast wave coming out. So that sounds kind of plausible. It could actually be that the neutrinos are the source of the blast wave coming out as they dump their energy in. Of course, this 1% figure was dependent on what radius we assumed, and in reality, that would be more complicated. You have to integrate over the overall amount of gas at a particular time. But it's at least looking plausible that a significant fraction of the neutrinos could be intercepted, by no means all of them, but maybe 1% or 1 in 1,000 or something like that, and they could therefore dump a lot of energy.